guys welcome back to my channel my name is Afton how are you guys doing well this month is autism awareness month and I'm a autism mom because I have a five-year-old son that is autistic at the moment he doesn't really talk but I'm praying that by next year he's gonna start talking because of the speech therapy he does and the work I'm doing with him at home as well and with prayers as well I'm hoping he's gonna start talking by next month by next year because most kids who are autism they start um, talking at a very late age and I'm hoping that he started off at seven years old with prayers I hope that could, that's possible but in this video I'll be going to a autism awareness seminar right in Vienna here so I'm gonna just show you guys a little clip of this seven the autism awareness seminar that I attended so I hope you guys gonna enjoy watching my video Aiden give my video a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel please subscribe all right and share my video as well I would really appreciate it and I also want to ask you guys to please watch my ads in my video thank you very much so I hope you guys enjoy this autism awareness seminar all right so enjoy all right guys so I just turned into this here cottage college here this is where the teachers does um, train, but I'm going to the diagnostic center, special needs kids. Alright guys, so I'm um, at this Autism Aware Parents um, Support Seminar here, right at the Diagnostic Center, so I'll be doing let you guys see a little bit of it. We really, really implore you to take as much information as you possibly can, and you use the information where you can, how you can, and you can always come back to us for suggestions and follow-ups as to how we can better improve that. It is with that note that I first of all say thank you and welcome. We're here to talk basically about autism and how autism is seen, viewed, and dealt with in Guyana. And when we talk about autism, what we're talking about is a developmental delay. A developmental delay in the sense that it develops with the individual. However, with early identification and early intervention, we can mitigate the challenges that that individual will face in life. So for the little ones that are coming here now, I want to say a big good job to you because we will be able to catch it early, we're going to identify it early, early intervention is going to be rolled out or is rolled out in some instances, and the intervention will lead to the treatment plan that will come. Okay? So yes, autism is a developmental disability that presents itself with, in some instances, restricted and repetitive behaviors where the individual continues to do the one thing over and over. They have a keen sign for sameness and routine and wanting to have this structure with them. Another one would be um, some of them are affected in social and communication interaction deficits. By this I mean some of them are going to be nonverbal, some of them are going to be verbal but very limited, um, and some of them are going to be echolalia, whereby they basically repeat everything that you say to them. Another characteristic would be that it begins at early onset means that the traits that you're seeing now are traits that you would have seen in years gone by. Some of it may have been proved, some of it may have gotten worse because of the environment situation, the circumstances around that individual there. So that's basically the synopsis of it. But all in all, I want to say thank you and welcome again. Thank you. And good afternoon. So today's activity that I will be doing with you parents, it's basically a sensory integration activity that you can do for your children at home. So today it's just two examples. One of them will be a flower sack and the other will be an oil bag. Now apart from these two activities that we'll be doing here today, we also have different items that we can create it with as well. We can use sand, we can use salt. Now this is basically to test the textures and the feelings or basically the sensation for your child, right? Apart from having them being tolerated towards the different textures, it also helps them with their attention and so on. 
So, for example, like in the one of them that we'll be making today with the flower, you can have them have like draw different letters or whatever imaginative drawing that they would like to do. Okay, so I'll share out the different items from the Lizard Miss Kim just share to you and we'll get started. These are the items here. is never easy no matter what the diagnosis is an autism diagnosis can be shocking or frightening to any parent and it can cause significant social communication and behavioral challenges but you are in the place to help your child thrive and to provide them with the love and support that they need before I get into it I'd like you to note a few things. Your child is unique and you are your child's first advocate or the voice of your child. Autism spectrum disorder is an incurable lifelong condition and it is not something that your child will grow out of. Despite many challenges, when you have a child with ASD, ensure you take care of you as a person firstly, you the parent, so that you can better support the needs of your child. And I want to also tell you that as a parent with a child on the spectrum, that you need support. 
And because we identify with you needing support, hence this is why you have this activity here today. This is part of the support that is provided to you as parents. It's not easy supporting your child on the spectrum, but there are some helpful tips which can help your child to thrive. Firstly, providing structure and safety for that child. Discovering ways to connect with your child also. Creating what we can call a parent-child plan. That shows involvement of not only your child and what they have to do, but also you as the parent being integrally involved. In addition, sharing the load. We don't have to bear everything on our own. We share the load. Find support and we collaborate with others as well. So those are what can happen in supporting your child on the spectrum. Firstly, I want to tell you that you should be consistent. You should maintain schedule. You should create a safe area within your home. And you should reward any acceptable behavior that you notice with your child. So how do you provide this structure in consistency? You have to create consistency in your home or in your child's home environment because that's the best way to reinforce learning and children know when you are consistent and as parents you must be consistent being aware of what for example your child's teachers are doing or when they come for therapy here being aware of what the therapist is doing will help you to provide the continuity within the home. So I told you about scheduling. Children with ASD tend to do best when they have a highly structured schedule or routine. And this can be a daily task. Routine that they must follow at a certain time, activities that they must be doing at a certain time. And if you set up that schedule for your child, for example, with regular times for waking, perhaps 6.30 every morning, times for meals and bath and play and school and bedtime. That's the scheduling. You can find cues. You can determine what's behind the tantrum. Plan family time or ways to have fun and be aware of your child's sensitivities. Let me give you some other insights. Now, you can communicate with your child by looking at them or by the tone of your voice or your body language and even with the way you touch your child. You can use those non-verbal cues. Pay attention to the kinds of songs they make their facial expressions and the gestures they use when they're tired or hungry or when they want something. And as for the tantrums, when children with ASD act out, it's often because you know you're not picking up on their nonverbal cues that they're communicating with you. Like throwing a tantrum is their way of communicating their frustration or them wanting to get your attention. And I told you that you must carve out that family time, time to have fun. We all need that social aspect in our life and we know that the struggle here is also with social interaction. But you must schedule that playtime and it will be more effective when your child is most alert and awake. Because parents and children, even though they're on the spectrum, can have fun together. Think about the things that would make them smile or laugh and incorporate those things into fun time or family time or to parent and child time or parents and child time. I mentioned before that a, creating a parent-child plan can work. This is no fancy um, plan, but 
it would involve the scheduling that you're doing, the structure that you're going to set up. Or if you've already set up that structure, what you're actually going to do during that time. And it can be simple things that you would be engaged with, but it's not just a parent plan. It's not just a plan for the child, mere scheduling, but it's involvement of parent and the child. And an effective plan would be able to build on the interests of your child. So you have to know what they're interested in and use those. Because if they're interested in it, it means that they'll be paying attention, that they'll be willing to do it, wanting to participate. That autism doesn't come with a manual, but it comes with a parent who never gives up. I'll say it again. That autism doesn't come with a manual, but it comes with a parent who never gives up. And you're evidence here today that you're not about to give up on your child because you made the time here today to come and to participate. And it, it, it gives an indication that you are showing interest in your child and you want the future of your child to be positive. So whatever information you're grasping, whatever the strategies you're learning here that you would employ it in the best interest of your child. Thank you. I want to hear these things. And it's going to tell the other person that hey, you're not alone. In this. this is what sometimes my experience, I can relate to someone else. Uh, what somebody else is saying, you might say, yes, my child is just like that. that yes, uh, in addition to this, he does that, 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 that. So let us share the experiences. But before we do that, let's get to know who we're talking with because we don't have any spies in here, do we? Ah. So let, let's make sure we know each other. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Singh. I have a son who is autism. I learned about him late. Um, I thought he was just uh, shy, you know, uh, and as he grew up, he would grow it out. But gradually, we, uh, the experience, especially at school, was very difficult. But that is how I really realized what is autism. And, and then I started to read up more about it, talk to people about it, and able to learn about what autism was like and how to deal with it. I must tell you, um, my challenge at, is great at school. Uh, many teachers are not willing to deal with my kid. And you try to go and talk to them and, and educate them what autism is like and how to deal with them. Most of them are telling you that they're not being trained and you can go on. And I know, not me alone, but all of you here, sometimes tears fall from my eyes because it is not an easy task. My kid could do things, but the way, the approach, you have to be very calm with him. So as parents, I know it is hard. I am yes. Okay. My name is Afton Freitas. My son is five years old. He's autistic as well. Um, I find it very difficult because I have to do it all alone. It's just me and him. Right now, I don't even have like any school or anything is open right now. And I can't even get nobody like to keep him because nobody wants to keep him because he breaks up everything into the house. My ha I had to like design my house for him. It's like, you can't have glass cups, glass plate. You break your TV, everything is like, I don't know, but I'm trying to stay positive and just try to get whatever help I can get for him. Um, I know you can't get like 100% better, but you know, things can get better for him eventually. Thank you very much. Tell someone. Tell someone. Yes. Good afternoon. My name is Frank. Very challenging for me as well because. Um, I'm home with them most of the time because the father is working. And sometimes I get very frustrated, you know. Um, it's like I don't have time for myself. But um, I have the grandparents, they're very helpful. And I must say that since he's coming to this institution, he's improving. I'm seeing a lot of improvement from him.
things there with no help. So I'm here hoping to get some help from now. I know we lost a lot of years without help, but not good. It is challenging and um, I can say that I can relate to each and every one of you. Um, but as parents with children on the spectrum, we have to advocate for them and we have to be their voice, right? Um, while it is challenging, I want to hear some fun things that they would do that would probably make you laugh even though we know it's sometimes challenging. because. From day to day, there are things that will happen that you would just look at them and you're amazed that this is happening. So, yes, we have the challenges, but I want to hear something funny. Let me hear from anybody something funny. Well, for Aiden, for some reason, like to watch me. Like, even all watching the news, and I'm like, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm like, 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 I'm
are the things they most commonly interact with? And how do we get them to be more attentive to you? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you some examples of what you can use at home. Um, don't look at these stuff. They're not expensive stuff. They're just examples. Right? So, the activity is called Bubbles and Balls. But what I actually did is extracted from another program that's called the B program. Right? So it's not only Bubbles and Balls. There's blocks. There's books. Right? So it's basically activity that begins with the letter B. So I only extracted two because of the time. So what you want to do, probably have something like this at home. You just use a small amount. Fine straw or a fat straw, and that's how cheap it is. All right. So I don't know how much this will cost you. All right. So this is what I'm saying. So one of the things these um, soap liquids come with as well is fragrances. So you can actually see what fragrance your child is inclined to go towards like if it's pineapple if it's banana and you get them attention with this so what you have now excuse me well fat dry working for me today right so you have the soap flavored water and you could draw their attention to it so the question is which child right now which uh, i said which parent are now right now don't even want to bust about when it comes from Right? So you don't need to stay far from them when you're doing this. This could be a close range activity. Right? Because you see I'm not using very long straws, I'm using very short straws. So it's a close range activity. It has a flavor or a scent that they're attracted to. It's cheap. And what it does, it gives them that chance to interact with you. You understand? It's an activity that's close. So they're looking at you, that, that eye contact that some of you are really looking for. They're looking at you, waiting for when you're gonna blow the next bubble. Right, so that's that's one. Right, where you have them sit, they can bounce. You, that, that way you're checking the sitting balance, their standing balance as well. You could have them um, lie over it. So you check their reflexes. What we do, especially in physical therapy, is check for a fall reflex. Basically, is when you walk, you stop your toe. Can you put your hand out to prevent your face from hitting the foot? It's in the floor. So you put them over it, and then you do like if you're doing a wheelbarrow. Right? So this is what we use the large balls for. Right? It acts as a trampoline as well. And again, it's a close contact, meaning that you have to be in contact with the child. They are now waiting on you to do something for them. All right? So that's one. Medium sized ball, two activities. Actually, no, you got like about four or five, but I'm going to give you two. One, kicking right you could either let them stand and kick run and kick and then what you do try to tell them right foot only left foot only so it gives you that coordination the other one is throwing and catching right so you, you could use a football the beach ball the volleyball the basketball within this size good for educational purposes right they're multicolored but you can say let's work on putting two red together two yellows together four green four blue you understand so what we start doing there we start counting we start grouping we start associations all right at the same time is something they want so you could probably throw four blue ones at them and tell me, okay, bring, and you work with a number system there. All right? But this is what I'm saying, that there are activities that are called close contact between you and your, your child, and you could use simple household items.
This presentation will entail understanding autism in children, a brief introduction to behavioral therapy, bringing it together, how to use this information at home, and of course, questions and answers. First, understanding autism. What is how people communicate and interact with others. It affects how they make sense of people. Now, some person on the spectrum is not going to get excited when they see fireworks or get excited for a family outing or a family trip or even react to something the way Autism is a developmental condition that is typically lifelong. As a person with autism grows with early intervention and behavioral therapy if necessary, they will learn coping methods. They will not grow out of autism. People with ASD experience difficulties with communication, social interaction, and restrictive repetitive interests and behavior. These are often accompanied by sensory issues such as over sensitivity or under sensitivity to sound, smell, and touch. Autism spectrum disorder is different in every person. I may have a child on the spectrum and you may have a child on the spectrum. Both of them are sensitive to sound. But when my child hears loud noises, he bangs his head on the wall and bites his arm. But when your child hears loud noises, she just They're both on the spectrum, but yet still, they're different individuals. Persons on the spectrum may have language delay. Some of them may have selective language, and some of them may be mute. With early intervention, the one with selective language can access speech therapy, and the ones that are mute can be taught how to communicate using text. That is, using text. Picture exchange communication system. On the spectrum engages in stereotype repetitive motor movement that is flapping of the hand or lining things up in order and for speech some of them have echolalia that is repeating everything that they do. Difficulty in social and communication interaction. They will be standing right in comes down to how we deal or cope with our child at home. Um, I know Miss would have said behavioral therapy. That you know it's a big word, but it just basically means what you do with them to help them to get along. Um, many times children would react to the way you react, and so. If they do something and you scream, they may throw the tantrum. Um, if they want something and you don't give it to them, they may throw the tantrum. But then you give it to them and then they stop. And then that's the behavior they're learning. That if I want something, I scream, mommy's gonna give it to me, I'm gonna stop. So every time I want something, I scream, mommy gives it to me, I stop. And I like to tell parents, in that way, they're conditioning you instead of you condition them. So yes. They look to see the weakest link, and unfortunately for us, sometimes we are the, the weakest link, right, in the whole in the chain. So, how do we flip the switch? Now, one of the things that um, psychologists realize that works is what we call applied behavioral therapy or applied behavioral analysis of um, children. Now, we have many examples, but I'm just gonna break it down. This should have been a Your child comes to you, uh, he's hungry, he wants something to eat, when you finish your but he doesn't want for snack. Yeah. 
and you know that it's long past the time that they would have had something solid. So you don't want to give them the snack, but what happened? I want snack, I must get snack, ice cream for snack. Mommy has a million things to do. My look before you see I kill you in here. today, look, come collect this thing. Yeah. Problem solved, right? So, one of the things we need to do to, for them is to start in the, the negotiation process. Okay, you want the snack, but first, you must eat some of this. So let's see. Eat some, and I have the snack like me, right? You want the tablet, you do something. Um, earlier, Miss spoke about rewarding good behavior. And so, we learn how to reward their good behavior. We learn how to, Miss um, Kimberly, it's not going to go, so you don't have to run. It's all right. <laughs> you don't have to run, right? We learn how to reward the positive behavior and identify the problem behavior that we don't want. And so, we learn to bring it around. And it is not too late. Your child can be two or your child can be ten and in Miss Circus. Your child can be 15, but we can still try some of these things, right? Let them know. If you do this, you're gonna get that. Because you didn't do this, I am removing, uh, many of them like the tablet, right? Mm -hmm. God, and they're gonna scream, and they're gonna scream, and they're gonna scream, but you're gonna say to them, I'm keeping this until you stop screaming. You stop screaming, okay? Come, let's sit. Right? So you're taking back that little control that you should have had. Right, mommy? Right, mommy? <laughs> because daddy would say, you better stop screaming. And he knows, look, I, don't, I better not act that like that. Uh -uh. <laughs> Daddy's going to get me. Right? But with mommy, sometimes you say, why are you screaming? Stop screaming. Ah, stop screaming. I said to stop screaming. I said to stop screaming. <laughs> and it's no help. And sometimes you have to call daddy. But we don't want that. We want you to have that control whether daddy is there or not, right? And don't grow soft, right? It's okay to love them. We have to love them, right? Because they need more love than the typical uh, child, right? They do not understand that some of the things that they're doing, they shouldn't be doing, right? So we have to love them. But in loving them, we also have to show them or make them understand that the behavior, we love you, but not this particular behavior, right? I love you, but I don't love this behavior, right? And so that is what the big fancy umbrella of behavior therapy and all of that is. It is developing in your child coping skills and developing in yourself the understanding that you are the one who will change the behavior for the better. Very important for our children, let them know that, okay, when you get up, I want you to go take a bath, then come for breakfast, or I'm gonna give you a bath and then we're gonna have breakfast, right? And when we develop these routines, we have to be consistent with them. Not today, we're gonna take the bath and then you come for breakfast, and tomorrow you're gonna to sit on the tablet and then you're gonna take the breakfast and then you're gonna go outside and run and then you're gonna go for the bath. Because there will come a time when that child gets up and doesn't feel like doing what you want them to do. And you cannot get them to do it because the routine was not set or it was not consistent. So check to see where they are, what is happening with them at this point and you can still develop that routine when you develop the routine you let them know ahead of time what is expected what the next activity is going to be and so they'll be able to look forward um, to that activity children with autism are smart they're smart they may exercise their abilities differently but they are very smart they understand what you're saying to them even though they may not express themselves in ways that you want them to. so that's basically my um, tips for some of the things that you can do at home when dealing with your children
Um, I must say again, thank you very much. This has brought. Now we will have the distribution of certificates, which will be done by Ms. Kiancha.